everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining with uh, Who's Afraid of the Humanities. Today, I'm going to talk to Professor Louis Maraj, who is an assistant professor at the Department of English, University of Pittsburgh, USA. Uh, his recent book, sorry, his recent book, Black or Right, Anti-Racist Campus Rhetorics, um, explore the notions of blackness in white educational spaces. So thank you very much, Professor Maharaj, for joining with us today. Um, it's, it's a real honor to, to talk to you. It's been a, a long overdue conversation uh, that, that we are going to start off today um, as the phase two is being launched. Um, we'll, we'll, uh, Professor, we'll talk about, um, first, um, you, you said you are preparing for the, for the upcoming semester. Let's talk about how your uh, how your day to day activities go about and then we'll just uh, go into the the usual questions that this podcast uh, is is concerned about how is it going these days for you well first of all let me say thank you for um, having me on here I, I, um, it's an honor to to talk to you um uh, and to to have this conversation um uh, things are, are going well things are busy Mm -hmm. I'm preparing to uh, teach two classes this semester. One of them I'm uh, especially excited about, about um, uh, it's uh, topics in Black rhetoric class on Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. um, so exploring the, the way that the Black Lives that Matter movement makes meaning. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm just putting together all of the readings right now. So this, this stack of books here <laughs> is, <laughs> is what I'm um, sifting through to, to, to prepare the readings and um, just working on on so so by and um, writing some recommendation letters for some of my grad students mm -hmm. um, uh, and and gearing up for the semester. Uh, I'm also writing a couple different pieces um, that are going to be due soon. Uh, mm -hmm. A couple different uh, essays, uh, one on assessment uh, in 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 what we call basic writing classes, and right. um, another on. Uh, the notion of presence mm -hmm. um, in relation to um, or in contrast to the idea of inclusion. Mm -hmm. um, and so that um, that is is something that um, that I'm trying to think about and write through for the for the writing deadlines I have right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, Professor, let's talk about how you got into the, the humanities. Why, why was it the humanities? What what kind of interested you in the humanities? Well, I think it started uh, very early on in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I, when I was very young, um, probably eight, nine, ten, uh, I really looked up to Eric Williams, Dr. Eric Williams, who um, was the first prime minister of Trinidad and Tobago. So I grew up in Trinidad and Tobago, mm -hmm. that's where I'm from. And um, uh, I knew that he was a doctor. And I, so I went to, to, to my mom one day and said, you know, I want to be a doctor like Dr. Eric Williams. Yeah. And so she explained to me that, you know, he, he really was a historian. Mm. Um, uh, and so uh, I realized quickly also that I didn't like blood um, and I didn't really <laughs> <laughs> want to be a medical doctor. Um, and I also started writing um, poetry from, from a very young age. Mm -hmm. um, I was very into reading encyclopedias mm -hmm. um, and dictionaries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I've always loved woods. Um, right. And so uh, I really started to gravitate towards literature and history and sociology as I was um, going through secondary school. And um, then my what I first wanted to do was to be a journalist. Um, yeah. So I actually left uh, the Caribbean to come to the United States. Uh, we didn't have a journalism program mm -hmm. in the uh, University uh, um, of the West Indies since I got some campus. And so that's why I came to the US to study journalism. Mm -hmm. And from there, I, it sort of kind of exploded. So I have a lot of interests. Um, my work is very interdisciplinary. So I, in college, I did, I did three majors, one in communications, one in literature, one in social science, really mm -hmm. was interested in the idea of identity, veered off into to really thinking of um, doing creative writing, mm -hmm. uh, crafting, um, honing my craft as a poet. So I went to grad school then to, to do a degree in creative writing uh, mm -hmm. in poetry. Um, and then I moved to studying uh, literature 
uh, at the start of my um, doctoral degree, and then I switched over to study rhetoric. Um, uh, and so it's been sort of uh, right. a winding journey. Um, and I still think um, uh, that I'm exploring a lot of different things at mm -hmm. the same time. Uh, and so I, I really, it's, it started with, um, with thinking really about my country and my country's identity and who were the people who were making social change mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and who, who was leading that um, and, right. um, and, wanting, and looking, looking up to those people uh, mm -hmm. and seeing what kinds of things they were doing mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and really wanting to be part of that tradition. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Um, uh, one thing I've noticed in your work is that most of your work is geared towards, you know, social justice and, you know, like, um, uh, I, I just want to know how does uh, your scholarship inform both activism and then the academic work that you have to like sort of combine together? Because one of the debates that we have is if you are an academic, uh, active, like you know, being, 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 you know, doing socially engaged work is is kind of you know, uh, probably um, uh, out of your scope. Probably, how how do you how does your work mutually inform these two these two trajectories? Um, so uh, I see them these two things as sort of really intimately in intertwined. Um, a lot of my work is interested in yeah. destabilizing boundaries. Yes. Um, uh, and and so in the in the book and in a lot of a lot of the things I write and and the work and the thinking I do, uh, I like to think about how we can sort of break apart the boundaries we have between spaces and between mm -hmm. genres, um, and and really. Uh, uh, think about how university spaces are actually quite very much not cordoned off from the communities that surround them, mm -hmm. um, and from the from the the, the people who, who we traditionally think about as outside of the university. How how the space of the university is really still affected by, still um, is it, deeply um, entrenched in the in the the communities that they surround, mm -hmm. uh, and so. Um, through my my work or what what in the academy we call community work mm -hmm. um uh i for instance do a lot of work with in high schools mm -hmm. to to sort of think about how we might reframe the types of education specifically for youth of color mm -hmm. in um, i did this work in in ohio and i'm doing this work in pittsburgh um to get them to think about how the university does actually have space for them Mm -hmm. um, uh, is actually a place where their literacies um, and the things that the knowledges that they already have, um, that there is a, sp a space for that. Mm -hmm. um, and then try to think about in, in the university, how do we even make even more space for, for these kinds of things mm -hmm. and for these kinds of literacies and peoples um, who, I mean, you think about these institutions and um, uh, they're, you know, public, education mm -hmm. institutions really should be public mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and not, you know, this, this notion of the ivory tower is really, mm -hmm. um, uh, is really both stigmatizing and um, it, it causes us to think in vacuums. Yeah. Uh, and so I really try to destabilize these ideas um, around what academic thought is even um mm -hmm. or who should be uh, who should be thought of as an academic who should be thought of as an intellectual mm -hmm. um and so in in my classes within the university i try to think about this um my uh writing for change class we start off by thinking about what is intellectualism mm -hmm. um uh and when when uh i do what is quote unquote community work mm -hmm. i try to um to think about how how what we're doing and how we're communicating is actually um, very much uh, a valuable intellectual thought um, mm -hmm. when we when we gather together uh, and have um, uh, conversation and uh, conversations uh, and practice um, uh, our literacies in in quote unquote non academic spaces. Yeah, I, I I've read that you've you've uh, co-written a critical essay with. 
undergraduates about reinventing the university, uh, uh, writing for change, reinventing the university. How how did how did that uh, come out, Prof. Manaj? Um, what what kind of what kind of insights uh, did you work with alongside with your students? Yeah, so that was a really um, formative class for me. It was the first class that I thought, taught um, uh, as faculty at the University of Pittsburgh. And mm -hmm. I had been offered this opportunity to um, write for um, write an essay for an uh, edited collection mm -hmm. um, uh, about um, uh, um, focused around um, De Bartholomew's Inventing the University. Mm -hmm. And I thought about um, the essay that we eventually ended up writing was really to think about how in the discipline of writing studies, we often use student work uh, as the basis for the, the, the arguments and the intellectual work that we're doing mm -hmm. um, in ways that um, make students into our objects of study. And yeah. so what the what this article is doing is sort of flipping that on its head and saying, well, the students are, are in fact authors. Uh, the mm -hmm. students are um, in fact bringing their knowledges to the table. Uh, and how do we, <clears throat> how do we um, hone that idea and um, uh, ask them to think about what the university, what the university means to them and what, mm -hmm. the, what they want out of a university experience. Mm -hmm. So that article was really driven theoretically by understanding um, how are the lived experiences of students in writing classes mm -hmm. um, uh, being brought to the table as a kind of, of, of um, uh, writing studies project? And then how do, how, um, if we listen to them, what, um, what does that mean for, for what, what we see the university as? Um, mm -hmm. And so the, the essay is really about uh, me with these students thinking about what does an ideal university space look like? It's a, it's it's an act of world making, um, mm -hmm. uh, um, and so it's it's the the theoretical framework is black feminist thought, um, uh, and so we're practicing this kind of world making by saying in our ideal university, in our ideal world, this is what the this is what the university might be. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it it might mean. Um, dissolving this idea that we have um, a separate space for intellectual thought and um, uh, uh, um, uh, outside of, of communities surrounding the university. It might mean uh, mm -hmm. uh, classes that are more experiential, that mm -hmm. are um, doing things outside of the walls of a particular building. Mm -hmm. um, it might mean um, X, Y, and Z. So um, that, that essay is really both thinking about what does it mean to ask students themselves what they want the university to be, mm -hmm. and also to think about the framework of writing studies as, as, um, as a discipline that often relies on studying students mm -hmm. um, as objects and what happens when those students become the authors of their own stories. Absolutely. In, in that line, I'm also interested in um, uh, knowing uh, how pushing boundaries in, in very neoliberal kind of academies, how does it, you know, work for people like, you know, us people of color, um, you know, um, it, it's probably you are, a, you are an assistant professor and you represent people of color like how does that work like pushing the boundaries in a in a very neoliberal kind of academy it's hard um it's it's not and it's and this is on on uh, honestly this is one of the main sort of s strains of thought in the in the book in black mm -hmm. or right because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really thinking about how um how those who are thought of as representing diversity mm -hmm. deal with being being objects that represent diversity and so i'm building on the work of sarah ahmed um mm -hmm. who whose whose book on being included um suggests that um those who represent diversity um, or, or the documents that represent diversity become non-performatives, mm -hmm. um, meaning that they, the, the idea of diversity is claimed in, in, um, by these institutions um, and that's, that's it. The, the claim is enough to represent 
that that the institution is doing something about it. Um, uh, um, so there's no performance of actual ch change, social change within the uh, institution. Mm -hmm. And so um, one of the other things that Ahmed uh, explains in that book is to to in in doing that work, in being someone who who is representative of diversity, you always become the problem. Um, uh, uh, you're, 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 you're perceived as a problem. Um, and uh, drawing from other, other work by Ahmed, um, uh, um, I like to, to think of myself as, as, as sometimes representing the trope of the melancholic migrant, um, uh, someone who is the reminder that, that mm. racism still exists. Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, because as both a person of color and a migrant in the United States, um, your experiences with racism are so fresh um, uh, that that when you're when you're confronted with it, your response is not to say, "Oh, this is the this is the norm," but mm -hmm. your your response is to say, "What's going on here?" and mm -hmm. and to sort of make noise about it. Mm -hmm. And so, it's been years of me making noise in different Absolutely. ways, um, mm -hmm. uh, and and trying to um, and and it's exhausting, it's tiring to do that, mm -hmm. um, but it's 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 necessary. I mean, part of um, uh, the conclusion of the book talks about um, racial realism and the mm -hmm. understanding that you may not be making change, but you, you struggle because what, what can you do but struggle, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so um, being the voice that is, is constantly saying, oh, what's going on here? No, this isn't right, mm -hmm. is exhausting. But it's it's the work that needs to be done um and so to, to to answer your question really it's 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 speaking up and um understanding how to use the privileges that you do have and mm -hmm. i will say that mm -hmm. you know being in the position that i am now is very mm -hmm. different from my position as a graduate student where mm -hmm. i try to do that work too right a much mm -hmm. more precarious position mm -hmm. um uh and and before that being an undergraduate student much more precarious position mm -hmm. um uh, undergraduate international student in the united states um uh and so um it's it's thinking about still what privileges do i have um to speak you know um uh um as uh, a cis male, like um, uh, in spaces, I can speak up for um, certain issues and be um, uh, received in certain ways. Mm -hmm. um, and I, st I have to think about what um, uh, um, what I can what what I can do from my position and my positionality in in particular yeah. spaces. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's it's been a lot of uh, thinking about how power is working in particular spaces, how um, might we push against that, and, and at the same time being cognizant of not feeding into sort of the neoliberal narrative mm -hmm. of I'm doing this for me, I'm going to, you know, like this is all about me as an individual and my individual mm -hmm. success. How do I press against this for not just me, but the people who are around me who I'm in coalition with? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Professor, I'm also interested in talking about a friend of mine has raised this issue on a, on a social media platform that the conversation between post-colonial studies and black studies has not been very, you know, like we've not been very, uh, you know, talking together. Um, and it's something that that needs to be done, you know, like that's, that's, that, there's a lot that um, these two, um, these two kind of, um, approaches can know from each other um how, how do how how do you think we could foster this kind of discussion um in 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 our classrooms especially using pedagogy or you know other other uh, sources other material how how do, how is it how can it become possible yeah i think there's there's a way that these two things are really wrapped up in each other and inherently mm -hmm. linked linked um, and as somebody who is from the Caribbean um, uh, from the from, from the angle of the diaspora that I'm uh, you know I, I think from uh, mm -hmm. these things are really inher inherently intertwined and and, and and the scholarship that I'm, I'm citing in the in the um, 
uh, in the book Black or Right and elsewhere in my work, uh, Franz Fanon, um, uh, Hide Mbembe, um, uh, Sylvia Winter, et cetera, is thinking both with Black studies scholarship and um, post-colonial post studies. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the classroom, I start every class. Um, this is every class and, and also anti-racist workshops I do outside of um, yeah. the quote-unquote mm -hmm. academy by thinking mm -hmm. broadly about power. Mm -hmm. And thinking about what power means and what are systems of power, um, breaking down those systems, thinking about the in, how systems of power are created binary identity categories, mm -hmm. and then having students think think about their positions as, as they relate to the binary categories that these systems of power mm -hmm. create to give some people access, to give some people privilege, and to deny some people access, mm -hmm. and to, de to, to mm -hmm. oppress some people. And it's through this work in having students really, and I do, I always do this with my students too. I'm mm -hmm. always, you know, doing these activities with them as well. Um, think about their positionality. Think about the stories that make and create these identities and think about the stories that dissolve these identity categories. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what, you know, what does citizen mean? What does, uh, English speaker mean in a particular context? What does um, uh, black as an identity mean? What does brown as an identity mean? What does um, uh, um, uh, heterosexual, what does um, uh, able-bodied, et cetera, mm -hmm. mean in actual lived experience? Um, how do we tell those stories in ways that we are then understanding that these categories are really ways of, of being that have been mapped onto us by institutions. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and how are those systems of power um, broadly like race, like colonialism, et cetera, um, like the state, like mm -hmm. the church, like these, these broad systems of power really helping to shape who we believe we are Mm -hmm. And then how do we tell those stories so that we understand how to dissolve all of those, um, uh, those boundaries that are set up between us? How do we use mm -hmm. what access we do have mm -hmm. for the benefit of the people who don't have access? How do we use the privileges that we do have for marginalized people? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's in these ways that I, I think about how these things are intertwined, right? Mm -hmm. um, how, how, how do we think um, that uh, global um, systemic racism is intertwined with histories of colonialism, mm -hmm. um, with racial capitalism, um, uh, with um, uh, centuries of exploitation, um, of imperialism, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it's really in thinking about power broadly, and then also thinking about pro power in tandem with writing and knowledge making, mm -hmm. um, uh, that we can we can really start to see where we're positioned um, and how what moves we can make through our writing to mm -hmm. start to dissolve some of these boundaries that have been created between us mm -hmm. and really build towards coalitions in our writing in our everyday being um, to, 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 to try and, and imagine um, new new kinds of formations of of uh, of being. It's lovely, it's lovely. Professor Manash, uh, feel free to like have a drink, like have a sip of water, <laughs> 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 just to remind you to keep you hydrated. Uh, just we, we were, we were uh, talking about um, uh, the black thought, the black feminist thought, these alternative methodologies that we talk about, like queer studies. At, at some point, they run the risk of being co-opted into this this larger narrative, like the grand narrative, mm -hmm. um, if if the black black thought or queer studies, whatever these alternative methodologies to retain its radicality, and to have that radical uh, the power of that radical knowledge uh, world making, how how do what what should we as educators um, as as students probably um, how how can we sort of uh, use these methodologies? Uh, yeah, in a way that you know it doesn't uh, reflect um, being co-opted into these grand narratives. I don't know if yeah, I phrased that we... correctly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I think we have to really always be thinking about what boundaries are we creating, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Are we are we looking to put up walls or are we w- looking to tear down the walls that have been put up? Mm-hmm. Um, how are, how is our work speaking to um, thought and intellectualism that is not thought of in that way? Mm-hmm. Um, how are the ways that how are the ways that things like respectability politics and um, mm-hmm. uh, um, how those those insidious ways that the academy sh- um, are are attempting to shape us? How are those yeah. things? Uh, how are we working to dissolve those hmm. um, uh, those ways of thinking? And so a lot of the what you know in the academy we call community work I do is really is really geared towards thinking with people who are not thought of as. Uh, academics and, yes. and, and not thought of as intellectuals and how what knowledges are they bringing to the table mm-hmm. that we, we in this over here in this world that we believe to be its own world mm-hmm. um, are are not really you know um, paying attention to or not thinking of as um, uh, legitimate in- intellectual thought and really always questioning that boundary like where mm-hmm. is the boundary between mm-hmm. um, an expression or a creative act um, mm-hmm or an idea, um, where is the boundary between um, those, uh, the, those things as they are happening in the world and mm-hmm. where we believe, what we believe our borders are and how do we dissolve those borders so that we keep thinking with activists, mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. keep thinking with um, uh, um, people in our communities who are often left off. We, we keep thinking about uh, we keep thinking with people who uh, are usually dismissed, are usually mm-hmm. um, not uh, um, understood to, to who, who may themselves have been cultured to understand themselves as not bringing some kind of uh, le- legitimate intellectualism into the world to, to say, hey, how, is, how are these ways of being, how are these ways of thinking actually um, uh, um, inherent to creating a new world project Mm -hmm. into into creating um, uh, a different kind of being and a different kind of thinking. And so for for me, it's at the the level of say teaching a class, Mm -hmm. it's bringing in things to a class that Mm -hmm. artifacts, bringing in uh, readings, et cetera, that aren't in academic anthologies, that Mm -hmm. are not in academic journals and saying, hey, how is this, how is this, YouTube clip from a protest. How is mm-hmm. this um, uh, um, local rapper in the song? How is this um, uh, stuff that we can find um, every day? How is how is everyday meaning really um, shaping the world? And how can mm-hmm. we think with um, uh, um, that kind of meaning to <laughs> to dissolve this idea that um, we're something kind of different? Um, uh, that we're we're um, we're uh, set apart from this, and so uh, for me, it's it's to push against this this uh, idea of um, uh, these kinds of uh, strains of thinking being co opted in particular ways. Uh, you really have to think think where where am I establishing Absolutely. walls? Mm-hmm. How do I break those walls mm-hmm. um, on an everyday level. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the, the preface for my book is written in what, when I was growing up, would have been called broken English, mm-hmm. right? Um, uh, and, and how do I, you know, write, um, write to break down walls? How do I write to, to disturb this idea that mm-hmm. the literacies that I grew up with and my um, nephews and, and nieces are growing up with are mm-hmm. you know have some kind of don't have a place in um in uh um uh, an academic book um don't have a place in uh um in a in a classroom in, mm-hmm. in um we we have to sort of really think with um with with a mentality i think of um always thinking about the outside how would we mm-hmm. how do we get outside of whatever mm-hmm. wall it is that we're, we're uh, putting up. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff working against that. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. one, of, one of the really, nef- really insidious and nefarious things is respectability politics, the idea that 
mm -hmm. um, X is a respectable way of being and thinking, um, and mm -hmm. Y isn't. Um, <laughs> and, and, and really, really checking ourselves constantly for, for how we're how we're allowing that those those that kind of thinking to to seep into um, uh, what we do and how we think. Mm -hmm. uh, shall we also talk about the work that you do outside the academia, if if you like? If we can also talk about that. Sure. So, um, uh, I, uh, so a lot of my work is public facing. So I'll start yeah. there. Um, I, I try to provide as much material as I possibly can, um, for free on my website. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and really with the work that I do with, um, uh, Dr. Kirsten Scott for D black, mm -hmm. we're really thinking about how do we provide, um, resources, to students of color and to generally um, anyone who is willing to um, uh, participate in our open programs, um, access to what is um, what is so often denied in academic spaces. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, there's that, there's the public scholarship and uh, the providing of this material. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's the work that I do in, um, in, in high schools uh, mm -hmm. with uh, Black youth in particular in Pittsburgh right now at the um, Westinghouse Academy, where uh, I run workshops on various things. Um, last in the, in the fall, um, in, at the end of November, I did a workshop on uh, writing personal statements for mm -hmm. um, applying to colleges. Mm -hmm. um, so really going into the spaces um, uh, of, of these sort of underserved schools and saying hey you know you have a story to tell let's mm -hmm. start there let's mm -hmm. start with who you are let's start with what's around you how do you tell your stories mm -hmm. um uh and how do you um open up opportunities for mm -hmm. yourself by telling your stories mm -hmm. um what are what are the ways that you might think of um uh that think of your stories that w are, are right there um around you that that you you might not think is necessarily um uh valuable but mm -hmm. is there and is 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 really part of who you are and 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 and, and uh a way to to contribute to um a, a different kind of world um how do you write out those stories mm -hmm. um uh and you know for these students th this these are resources um for for um possibly um applying to, to colleges and possibly thinking about how, how to get funding to go to college mm -hmm. um, in some cases. Um, uh, and so that's the, that's sort of a snapshot of the kind of work um, that I do outside of, um, outside of, of the, the academy. academy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and really uh, with D Black, um, we, the work we do with grad students stretches across institutional lines. And that's something that's really important that um, the work that Kirsten and I are doing are not just with students who are who are around us every day, but mm -hmm. um, the the network is really about thinking how are how are these how are certain populations within the academy really understood and how how, how, how might we open up spaces for them to be served mm -hmm. uh, and, and not just serve what the academy is has mm -hmm. been cultured to serve but um how do we actually think about um offering programming that says hey we're gonna think about your uh, men mental wellness. We're gonna think mm -hmm. about um, the trauma of being um, a black body in the academy. Um, we're gonna think about um, what scholarship you're not reading in your in your classrooms mm -hmm. and giving ac providing access to mm -hmm. um, these scholars through our book series and providing free books um, mm -hmm. uh, um, by the uh, book series authors. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really about opening up. Um, it's, it's about trying to find ways to to open up spaces mm -hmm. um, uh, from from different angles. Um, mm -hmm. D Black more of the um, working with grad students, the the work with um, high school students, thinking about opening up opening up uh, spaces for them to to think about themselves in different ways, but also potentially to see themselves as um, part of uh, um, uh, of of the academy, if they want to, to pursue that route, mm -hmm. um, it, that work is really about opening up things. As as is 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 the work that I do within um, 
within uh, uh, classroom spaces and within mm -hmm. my um, scholarship. Thank you, Professor Maharaj, for being with us today. Uh, before we wind up, is there anything that you would like to comment on or like to tell us that I forgot to ask you? Is there anything that you would like to add? Well, I, I mean, I think um, we're at the start of this year. I think a lot of folks <laughs> just to comment a little bit about about where we are um, mm -hmm. in in terms of particularly the U.S. situation yes. with with yes. the way that the the there was this general in in popular culture and in other spaces there was this framing that 2021 was going to somehow be a break from 2020 and be temporarily mm -hmm. different um, mm -hmm. uh, once we had crossed this 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 yes really imaginary line mm -hmm. and that happened and then you saw we, we saw what happened um uh uh where you know there was a white supremacist mm -hmm. attack on mm -hmm. um on the government um and and they it forced you know a lot of folks to say things like oh these pr these protesters quote unquote are uh, are not being treated this, you know, were treated differently from, say, Black Lives Matter protesters, mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, and it evoke notions of um, democracy and and what what is um, how are um, how, how white, you know, oh, we should pay attention to how white supremacy is is is, is running against notions of democracy and. Mm -hmm. um, these things have much longer histories. I think that's the last, <laughs> the last thing I want to say. Um, in the in the fourth chapter of Black or Right, I look at the way that white supremacist materials get circulated in overt mm -hmm. ways around college campuses. Mm -hmm. How um, white supremacist posters, etc., media circulate, and mm -hmm. the kinds of rhetorics that they use. Um, mm -hmm of your people, you will not replace us, etc. The rhetorics of uh, um, uh, of you and they, um, you and them, mm -hmm. uh, and um, and and also how these kinds of rhetorics are also inbuilt inbuilt into the institutions themselves. Okay. So while looking at these things, I'm looking at the way that security, notions of security and uh, um, uh, insecurity are developed through campus security notices that racialize mm -hmm. certain bodies in particular ways. Mm -hmm. How these notices are in fact very similar rhetorically to runaway slave notices. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and so, and the, on one hand, we can't say we, we, we dismiss white supremacist thought while also saying, hey, we're okay with these mm -hmm. kinds of notices being circulated. We're okay mm -hmm. with these kinds of notions of students of color um, in, these, in these academic spaces. These things are intertwined. Absolutely. And so if there is last, something I wanna say last is that we, ne we need to pay attention to how very deeply entrenched these um, uh, kinds of uh, uh, oppressive thought systems are into not just, you know, flash events that happen and then we say, oh my, how, how did this happen? Mm -hmm. We need to think about the everyday rituals that lead to these kinds of Absolutely. things happening, that mm -hmm. lead to these things being thought mm -hmm. of as, as okay. Mm -hmm. um, and, and how is the, the rhetoric we're using um, uh, deeply sort of entrenched and in some ways complicit with, mm -hmm. with these kinds of um, systems of thought. And, 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 and instead of taking a moment like this to say, put out a statement and condemn this mm -hmm. kind of thing, mm -hmm. think deeply about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, I saw a lot of statements from, from universities that were like, well, of course there's no place for this here. We know who we are and this is, there's no place for this kind of thought here. Mm -hmm what what does that mean to know who you are like what 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 do you have you you know how do you mm -hmm. think critically um about what what identity you're put you're putting out into the world as institutions as individuals mm -hmm. um so yeah i think i'll uh, i'll i'll end on that note um uh that um that these things are really deeply entrenched um in racial capitalism in settler colonialism 
um, uh, and, and, and before we rush to say um, distance ourselves from them, really think about what, um, what our daily practices look like. Mm -hmm. um, what our everyday uh, ways of communicating um, uh, look like and how uh, deeply entrenched these kinds of oppressive systems uh, mm -hmm. are in, into, those, into those things, yeah. Thank you, Professor Maharaj. Thank you so much for this very insightful uh, conversation that I had with you. I hope um, this is the beginning of some serious conversation um, with, you know, uh, people um, who, are, who are in the academia doing um, uh, radical work, um, but uh, not uh, so much doing socially engaged work. Um, thank you, Professor Maharaj. It's a pleasure, it's an honor having you. Um, uh, I hope oh, and wish you all the best for all your work, uh, the, the, the work that you do to, um, uh, to uh, sort of envision a radical future, not just to envision, to make it work. Thank you very much for that. Thank you for having me and all the best to you as well. Um, I really appreciated talking with you uh, today. Thank you.